what I think we should talk to uh, we should talk about immediately is the fanatic drama. So for people that don't know, there was a bit of fanatic drama yesterday where Jun had an interview in Korean where he said some things about the draft and it kind of like went viral a bit because I think Rich tweeted it. Um, and it's also just par for the course. I think it's one of those things where there's an extra amount of scrutiny on it because of the fact that Fnatic always has world's drama. There's always some issue. If you remember in 2021, there was the upset situation. Um, in 2022, they had the drama with like, you know, Hilly, like Hilly had COVID and like people had COVID, so they weren't able to travel. And then they weren't able to like, they, then they played with like a sub. They didn't even scrim um, because people were so sick. So they played with a sub. They actually played with Rux. That got them the job the next year. Um, and then last year, I guess it was, there was a lack of fanatic drama, but there's been a lot of fanatic drama. There's 2020 worlds fanatic drama between like self-made nemesis was the, the idea there. 2019, um, those drama as well. There's just always drama at worlds when it comes to fanatic for the most part. Jun had an interview. We're going to read the translation and a lot of it stems from their draft against top esports because top esports is a team that is, uh, very known at this point. They played a lot of matches in the LPL. They played a lot of matches. Uh, at MSI, they went to EWC. They've won to, um, they played LPL in spring. They've been a team that has played a lot of games. And one thing that people know about Top Esports at this point, I mean, we've known this for years because we were literally Cream fans. We were OMG fans for the longest time. But the thing that we've known for years is that Cream has always loved playing Melee Champions. Like, Melee Champions are Cream's bread and butter. He was really great at Akali, Silas, Yone. He was playing these almost every single game. When those were banned, he would play, like, Ari. There was a period where he was pulling out Kiana. He was one of the only people pulling out Kiana last year. Um, he was played Diana mid, Viego mid uh, back in 2021. He's played Yasuo. Like, this guy is a Melee mid specialist. So when there's one champion that is extremely broken in the meta, which is Yone and it's a melee champion, why would you give it to somebody who liked to play this champion when it wasn't even good, bro? When Yone was not even being picked by other people, Cream was picking it. And now that it's in OP, we are going to give it to Cream. Cream is so ass. Yeah, he was really ass for Fnatic. Good comment. Good comment. Uh, was it really necessary to release Krem? <laughs> Lin Zhen's Yone against top esports? Uh, on the fourth day of the 2024 LOL World Championship Swiss stage held at the Riot Games Arena in Berlin, Germany on the sixth local time, uh, Fnatic met TES and lost in 24 minutes. One win, one loss in groups. Uh, that was uh, the stage they played in. With the loss, Fnatic is at 1-2. and two. TS is now at 2-1 and one in the group stage. Okay. Fnatic gave Yone, who was considered the OP champion of the tournament, to top esports without banning him. It was a regrettable choice considering the fact that Cream is, an a is a specialist in AD and melee champions. Exactly. Cream was flying around in the game as if to punish Fnatic's complacent judgment. Yoon Sejun, so Jun, uh, who met the Kukmin Ilbo after the match. I don't know why I felt like that was... I felt like bad saying that. Also admitted the decision to let Yone... Go was a mistake. He said, the opposing mid laner is a player who is really good at using AD. Yone, Smolder, Korki, and Tristana were all good when they were meta champions and expressed his frustration, saying, originally, I decided to ban Yone, but the ban pick suddenly changed. He said, we decided to ban Yone at 11 or 12 last night and added, they suddenly said they wanted to change the ban today. He added, uh, I don't know. We know. <laughs> I don't know. We know, but if we do that, release Yone. It seems like they're saying we should continue doing something that we shouldn't do. I'm not sure what the translation is here, but obviously he just doesn't like the, the Yone pick because this is obviously translated from Korean. Um, since Fnatic is relatively weak in the lane phase, they need to be more precise and clever in their ban and picks. Uh, Jun said, we are a bit weak in the lane phase, so I think we need to prove our ban pick. Wow. Okay. Makes sense. That That's why I said it. Okay. He added, there are many instances of where we fought poorly in engagements. There are many instances where we chased the opponent too deeply and ended up killing them. Um, Kelly himself, I guess, is what, is what he means. Like, they ended up dying. Uh, ban pick wasn't the only reason for the loss. He said, I was playing well until the lane swap process. However, I couldn't engage in the early and mid game or the late game team fights. And I was out of my mind the whole time I was playing. I was out of my mind the whole time I was playing. He added, the enemy misfortune kept pushing la uh, lane even though she didn't have summoner spells. It's also a shame that I couldn't catch that. Fnatic has one and two losses. There's still a possibility of advancing to the Swiss stage. Jun said, we showed a bad performance today and lost. However, the tournament is not over yet. 
and expressed his determination, saying, we will prepare harder for the remaining matches. Berlin reporter. Okay. Yep. Boom. All right. So that is essentially the, the basis of the drama was this, was the, that Judden was talking about, like, how they wanted to ban Yone. They decided that they were going to ban Yone. And then sometime the night before the game, they just decided, no, we're actually going to leave Yone up. My whole criticism of leaving Yone up was who they were playing against, right? If Fnatic was a different team, I think you could leave Yone up. If you're a team that needs to scale, let's say you're a team that 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 is like Gen.G, and you're, you're a very good scaling team, you understand how to play side lanes, you're very comfortable playing with like a 1-2k gold deficit, you can give the Yone for the Smolder. This is something we've seen. You play Grasp Smolder into Yone. The lane phase is fine for the Smolder. The Smolder gets through lane, gets to mid game, and Smolder becomes really strong once he hits 225 stacks. That is quite literally the opposite of what Fnatic's game is. Fnatic's game is like early skirmishing. They have zero macro. They have zero brain. They don't understand tempo. If you watch the game that actually that they actually played, right? If you watch the game they actually played, they make so many plays where they would make this play every single time because they see characters on their screen that they that they have the ability to kill, and they immediately will just send way too many numbers and not consider like tempo in other lanes. So if you look at the game, okay, they have like. Very small lead. They got one kill on 369 because he flashed once in lane swap. All right. So let's start here because these are the mistakes that I feel like they'll make every single game. Here's a situation where what you should be trying to do here. This is after they... Okay. What you should be trying to do here is you should be trying to match them generally. And you want to be matching the Cassante into Yone. Why do you want to match Cassante into Yone here? Actually, we'll go before this because they use double TP. We'll go before this. But you want to match Cassante into Yo or you want to match um Cassante away from Yone because Yone is building full AD. He's gonna get a blade of the Rune King, and you have a Rukern because you want to be playing against a Rumble, right? But let's look at this play. This is the first time where you can see that they completely ignore tempo. So top esports is fine pushing here. Why are they fine pushing here? They have a ward behind. They're fine pushing top lane, even though Jackie Love has no summoners, because since they have grubs already, and the grubs are not up yet, right? Like the grubs are not up here yet. Grubs are spawning in what, like 55 seconds or 35 seconds, whatever. If they die, they'll have enough time to co to contest grubs. So they're fine to, to walk up here. If you double TP, they get resources in mid and bot. You commit two TPs. Then you don't, then you're just losing waves on the sidelines and top esports still will be able to contest the grubs. Also, top esports doesn't even need to contest the grubs. So they can late contest, only get one. If you make a play right now on top side, you're going to lose so much experience and gold in the other lanes that it is never going to be worth it. So this is something that you see like Chinese teams and Korean teams do pretty frequently. I think T1 is 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 really good at this. I think Damwon understands this concept. Hanwha Life is 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 really good at this as well. Genji is the only team that doesn't really do this where they'll just like they'll just respect the play and they they will take um you know, they, they will not maximize how much gold they can potentially generate, which I think is actually one of the small Gen.G flaws. But this is something that most teams are willing to do because they understand how much you will end up losing in the other lanes. So here, Jackie Love walks up without summoners. They're like, okay, they just accept Jackie Love is dead here. Like, they don't try to save him. They don't try to do anything. All right, nice. You killed Jackie Love. You sent four people top to kill Jackie Love. The person that's mid right now is Skarner. Skarner is holding a mid wave here, but Skarner getting a mid wave doesn't even mean anything, right? Because Skarner, it's pre-14, so Skarner is not even getting proper gold, uh, proper experience from the wave. He's getting proper gold, but he's not getting proper experience from the wave because up until 14 minutes as a jungler, you don't get um, lane experience as if you're a normal champion. This is one of the ways that they nerfed jungle a long time ago. So even though Razor is getting a wave, he's only getting 40% experience on this wave of what you should get. So they're literally losing like they're losing, they're getting, they're getting 40% experience in two lanes. So if you're going to think about like, like what it would end up being, if you were to do it out of 200, they're getting 40% experience and top esports is getting 200%. Nice. Then here on the way back, Fnatic is going for this play. And you also have to consider that like they used, they, they use TPs. And now they're they're suffering getting back to mid, and Grubs wasn't even up yet. If they made this time this play on Grubs, 
it would make sense. It'd be like, okay, well, at least they got grubs. They can even out um, the, the pace of the game. Then they could potentially split map, send everyone on just top mid. They could lose bot and they could try to deny top lane to top esports, right? That would be the idea in that situation. Here, they don't have the ability to do that. Wow, flash the Skarner E so we don't die. Crazy. They overforce. This is classic Fnatic. Before the Yone is even strong. Very classic overforce from them. It's whatever. Now you're kind of f***ed because you don't have teleport. So you can't contest the grubs. You're losing grubs. You just used your ultimates mid. Like Skarner has no ult. Um, Jun has no ult. Oscar is dead. Bot wave is getting pushed in. If you look at what, what Humanoid had to do. Humanoid went top. He TP top. Then he has the base, and then he walks bot. You think this is worth it for a smolder? You think getting one assist for a smolder is worth him losing, what, two waves of experience? In the early game? Losing two f***ing waves? Hell no. Then they know 369 has no flash. Okay. Cream right now doesn't even have blade, but he's zoning Oscar off the wave because he's threatening that other people are there while they're going to defend bot. So here, Oscar is scared. And you can tell that they don't know where support and jungle are. So they're, they're assuming they can make a play on bot. Now you have to also consider that while they're making this play on bot, they don't have teleport top. So they can get outmanned in this play. This is a very risky play. They're making a play bot lane while they don't know where top esports is and top esports has teleport advantage top. So they're making this play. 369 has no flash. So he ends up dying here. Yone's trying to back off so he can look for a potential TP. He backs off, off vision. Now he teleports in. And now we have two people behind a turret trying to kill us Sejuani. By the way, even if this ends up working, let's say Humanoid gets a two for two here. 369 is just going to teleport to top lane. And Yone is just going to keep on pushing bot lane and they're going to lose experience here. Let's say this ends up working and he kills Tian. The Smolder is still not farming and the Yone is continually farming. Yone is just bot. Noah has to cover this. That means mid is open right now. So they're just going to lose experience mid. 369 TP's top. And this is just what Fnatic does wrong every single game. Like they, they don't understand tempo. They don't understand like how to play around objectives properly. This has been their downfall the entire year. And yet they're drafting in a way where if they make these types of mistakes, it's unplayable. Like I would say at this point, the game feels unplayably lost. Smolder is behind the curve when it comes to stacking. Their comp is way weaker in the mid game. Like once we get into the mid game here and you have Sejuani, Yone, Rumble, Rel, MF, like all these are going to AOE you. You can't contest this Drake game. I mean, you can't contest this, this Drake. You can technically contest this Drake, but it's not good. Like even if you get the Drake, you're going to end up losing Harold, and you're going to end up getting pushed. They have five grubs. Mid turret's going to die. Top turret's going to die. All the turrets are, are 200 or uh, two plates. So all of the turrets are executable. How can play? They moved over for this this play mid. So as soon as as this happens, right? Smolder is so far behind he can't even go bot lane versus Cream. If he goes bot lane, he's gonna get solo killed by Cream. By the way, Cream is Blade of the Rude King completed. He has Flash, Humanoid. Can't if he goes bot alone without Flash, Yone will just dive him and one shot him. So he has to just group. The whole time Yone is just taking the bot turret with five grubs. Yone gets free bot turret. They move in. TS realizes they can't really contest this. It doesn't matter because they already got bot turret. Smolder has to catch bot. And they're all moving up to top lane. They're all moving up to top lane because they're going to get a Herald. And then Rumble is going to base and catch the bot wave late. So they're willing to drop one bot wave. They're, they're willing to drop like one wave or a turret later on in order to gain a bigger advantage somewhere else. So their mentality here, if they just rotate Cream around because he's the one that's strong, like he's going to be able to pressure top turret. Smolder now has TP, so Top Esports can potentially make a play, but they shouldn't because they're weaker. If they try to play, it should be hard. This was a really good play from Razork, right? Like this is the strength of, of players like Razork. They're good at finding angles like this. You can see the suppression here from the E. Cream didn't know the interaction. I didn't know the interaction either, to be fair. Yone ults, he gets suppressed out of it and ends up just dying. Good play. Does it change the game? Not really. Once again, they go on Rumble. Like, this is another situation, bro. This is literally the same thing again. What do you gain if you kill the Rumble here? There's not even a bot tier one turn anymore. You're a teleport. You have, you're five manning a Rumble, essentially. Noah's hovering. Humanoid is bot lane. You're TPing in with Cassante. 
You have Jun Razor here. Like, what about top lane? Like, at, at the very minimum, you get one kill on the Rumble, who's, like, not even ahead. And then you lose two teleports for it. So that means on the next Drake, you're just going to be down TP. You're going to have to drop waves eventually. And you're, like, losing damage mid. Like, look at, look at mid lane and top lane turrets. Nice, you killed the Rumble. We got Rumble, guys. They lose two turrets for it. And then, like, because they, they know they get out macroed, Fnatic has this thing where as soon as these types of plays happen, they immediately are like, bro, we made a bad play. Enemy team is, is getting more than we are. We got to fucking kill them for it. And here comes, like, the game losing play. Imagine teleporting here, by the way. You, you kill Rumble, you see his death timer. Just for the record, you see Rumble's death timer here. So you're like, oh, it's 10 seconds on Rumble. Skarner has no ult. Oscar just lost his entire HP bar. And we're teleporting behind with Smolder. Nice. Rumble is up with TP. By the way, the Rumble is literally just baiting Fnatic to continue walking forward. Rumble could have TP'd already, right? Rumble could TP right now. Like, he could TP right now. But he's just trying to wait for Fnatic to overcommit even harder so that he could get, like, a turbo TP and where they're already committed. So as soon as they go over this wall, this is when he starts looking for TP. As soon as they walk up here, they call for the turn. Now we're teleporting in. They turn. Smolder's dead. Smolder's in no man's land. Rumble isn't the greatest, but it's whatever. Jun is dead, too. And now, now your game is literally over, by the way. Now your game is literally over. Because... You just all died. Now you're just down 4k gold. And the gold is localized on the people who want to have the gold too. It's 4k gold, but it's 4k gold directly into your carries. Now the game is just completely over. I mean, this is just, this is just fanatic. And, and when you make a play like this, I mean, the game literally ends in five minutes from this point. The Chinese teams know how to close out. The Korean teams know how to close out. You just can't make these types of mistakes for players like this. And it's like all this could have been avoided. All this drafting could have been completely avoided by just banning Yone. And like, what do you want Humanoid versus Cream on? Mage matchups? That's what you would think? Some type of matchup where you have the ability, like if, if I was playing as Fnatic, I would want to see, is there any way we could get like a Humanoid Talia, Humanoid Syndra, Oriana, LeBlanc, any of these with some type of like Bruiser Jungle, Razor Jarvan, Razor Viego, you know, Razor playing in Vi if it's good. This is what I'd be looking for with this team, but Instead, they're looking for it. They think they're Genji. They actually just have an identity crisis. They, they think that they are Genji. But they are not Genji. Why does Fnatic think they're Genji? No one knows, bro. No one knows. That game's completely lost. This is without Smolder having, or this is without um, Cream having ult. You could just take the flash just like that. They have unsolvable situations. Who's going to catch top wave? Look at top wave. Who can go top lane right now versus, versus the Yone? Tell me. Which one of these champions? You think the Kasate can do it? You think the Kasate's not getting chopped up? The red buff Yone top lane? Who can play top lane versus this guy right now? He's just going to be able to push waves deep the entire time. Pushes waves deep. There's no tier two, so they can push waves ultra deep. They control your entire jungle. Cream can hover here permanently. You walk anywhere close to your jungle, like they go for a ward, they, they walk anywhere close to the jungle, and obviously Top Esports just sends on you. They're very aware how weak Fnatic is at this point. They're exploiting it. And they kill the enemy jungler, they have TP. Like this wasn't even a game. Like in, in LEC, you'd never lose a game like this, this hard, this early. Like Rogue, Giant X, SK, they're never punishing you like this. They're never like, oh, we're, we've got this tier two turret. So our Yone can push all the way. And if your jungler walks anywhere, even into this brush, bro, f these brushes, if he walks even on this side of the map, we full send, kill you, and we just do Baron and win the game. Yeah, no, it's this Yone champion. Yeah, we should give it to Cream, actually. Yeah, for sure. Good drafting. Then this happens. Humanoid is getting solo killed. He tries to catch mid wave. Cream just sends it on him. He has no flash from when Cream blew a top. Goodbye. Mago stops him. Good bullet time here. Game's over. 
I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know how this could ever happen, bro. I don't know how this could ever happen when it comes to drafting. If I can call the whole enemy's draft, you probably f***ed up. So this, this was just crazy to me, bro. This was crazy. I hated watching this game. Nemesis in for humanoid? <laughs> don't think so, bro. Don't think so. I'd be down to see Nemesis play again, though. I feel like him and Razork would actually probably play pretty decently. I think they would complement each other pretty well. I mean, even though, I don't know if they'd like each other, but I think they would complement each other well. It's kind of like the Nemesis self-made thing that kind of worked out.